Hey guys, James here, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna be transparent with this. I almost didn't make this uh, reaction video, and not because of uh, the matchup. I hate Bowser Eggman, but I'm not petty enough to uh, not watch the episode because of it. I shouldn't say petty, but you know what I mean. Reason why I almost didn't is because I'm, if you can't tell by the more, the shittier um, audio on my end, that's shittier than normal, I am sick, or a bit sick. Yesterday was, like, way fucking worse, so I was thinking I might not be able to record my reaction for this, but I woke up feeling better. I could actually fucking breathe now, so yeah, the audio on my end, I might sound more nasally. Sorry, uh, I did the best I could. I do have a, uh, a glass of tea, a fucking um, cold medicine tea next to me. I don't know if you could hear that sip, but I do have that on the side, so yeah, you might hear that, and again, apologies if I sound easier than usual and the audio is complete horseshit, <laughs> but yeah, Bowser vs. Eggman, I made it clear I do not like this matchup at all, I was not looking forward to this, and uh, yeah, Bowser vs. Eggman fans continue to prove me right on very good reason for me not to like this matchup, because, yeah, I still got fucking fans of this matchup being dicks. Again, not all of them were like that, there was a few, and I do respect a few that could actually be fucking civil. Yeah, this fucking Balzag fans mass disliking the, the, uh, fucking... Well, I shouldn't say mass disliking, because, like, four dislikes to two likes on my prediction video. And I'm assuming they just saw... I don't like this matchup, did not bother listening to my reasons, and just uh, disliked it and left us out actually watching the video. I wouldn't put it past them. But, yeah. And, like, everything that we've seen of this episode so far has not gotten me excited. I don't really, I didn't really like the previews for the rundowns. I just did not find them that funny. And then the ending was good, but I'm sort of getting the vibes that these are mostly going to be listing off their arsenals and... Bare minimum character coverage. I, I feel like some may still be like uh, links from Link vs. Cloud 2018. And the tr the sneak peek, I say loosely, because it was more so just a trailer. There's even like a little trailer thing in the corner there. Yeah, it didn't really sell me on it either. I don't think Bowser's voice acting is that good. Eggman's is fine, though. And it being a trailer doesn't really show that, like, it's gonna have, it's not gonna have the issues I brought up. And I will say, DJ did say it's like the, or the team were saying this is like the fourth longest episode. So, maybe my issue of, you can't really cram as much as you can with their other options into this might be solved. Record that did, you had, did have to make this longer for that. And longer doesn't necessarily mean better, because uh, uh, Fan of Dark Side, that's a long episode, it's like a six minute fight, and is a not the best received episode, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see if my issues come to light and if my reason to dislike this matchup will actually be justified. Most likely will be. But I'll be back once the episode starts because we have a, a minute it says till the premiere starts and then like a two minute uh, hype up thing. So I'll be back once that begins. Okay, a couple seconds. It's like a fucking four minute wait. Jesus Christ. Three, two, one. Disappointment. Let's go. Okay. This battle is sponsored by Marvel <clears throat> Snap and Prize Picks. Marvel Snap again. Fight! Bowser versus Doctor Eggman, the king of the Koopas and the baddest of badniks, and they're not alone. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And yep. it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills. I don't know why they only have those. Uh, Character showcases go for, I don't know what they're called, go for like only two seconds. Uh, the Mushroom Kingdom. Oh wow, black box right away. Adventure. Love. Oh, boring. Move aside, princess. It's time this place got way more awesome. Here comes King I don't watch the uh, preview, character previews, since like the day they came out. Because I did not think they're that good. I don't remember when this one ends. of the Mushroom World. Uh, b -b -b hobbies, dancing, golf goods, cake, drumsticks, steak, 
family. The Mario Bros. Yoshi swimming. Why swimming? The evil king's day in the sun. Her light was so bright, Bowser became infatuated with her. So he turned all the toads into bricks and kidnapped her, putting their pretty. Yeah, like this bright animation's good. That was like the only memorable thing from the sneak peek of the rundown. Awesome. Oh yeah, they used to have Mario movie footage. Weirdly. This music does sound like Bowser music. I don't know what the song this is, but it does sound like it would be Bowser's theme. I'm sorry if I, like, uh, blow my nose out in the darkness. It's uh, instinctive. God, it would be so cool if we could see all this and a fight, but it's probably got to get cut a lot for the army shit. Uh, Pit Mario's canon, mainline games frequently. Yeah, okay, yeah, so. Whole Paper Mario uh, ordeal and it be can or not right there. Despite his clumsiness, Bowser's charisma and leadership brought many to his side. Not enough uh. to defeat Mario, but his army doesn't make it easy on the Red Plumber. They're the most wicked band of misfits this side of World I think it was just like Mario Coon and Archie Sonic, they were excluding. Spanning multiple territories across the Mushroom World and beyond. In my key. Koopas, the Troopas, and the others make up the infantry. Some with wings, some in shoes, and some even in race cars. They're the Red Shirts, first in and... Piranha plants, bloopers, and lakitus use their surroundings to get the jump on unsuspecting prey. By land, sea, or sea. Yeah. We'd be here for Literal rocks? Oh, okay. I see what they mean. It was imperative for Bowser to nurture a unit that covers their own vulnerabilities. For example, Kamek and King Boo both have magic. And the copies of Bowser, King Boo, and Grip. Okay. And destabilizing dimensions. While Kamek focuses on buffing allies, canceling enemy powers, summoning anything he desires. Or swapping my items to screw up my Mario. Okay, yeah, this is as far as we got. I think it was a bit before this. The minions can use pretty much any power up Mario can. The Goombas make frequent use of Tanuki Tales, and Bowser can really get in. Okay, so this is starting to feel more like it's about his army than Bowser. It started to feel less like an army and more like a family unit. Oh, you mean like his kids, the Koopalings? Yeah, they're adopted. What's the difference? Good point. Bowser took them in and even trained them in dark magic. So no one's as spoiled as his natural nepo baby, Bowser Jr., captain of the Koopa Troop. Spoiled is an understatement. Is Jr. adopted? He Shadow Mario. He terrorized Delfino Plaza with literal evil paint. That whole debacle was basically his attempt at elementary school art class. And I bet Bowser still has some on the fridge. But really, the king is... Yeah, the ending here is good. I'm gonna give it that. The fam's in trouble. He can will himself to transform it to a giant kaiju, all to crush whatever bullies tug at smack. Maybe a little overkill. Just one punch from Giant Bowser launched a castle out of orbit. Taking into account the flight path and the scale of their universe, Bowser's punch must have hit with a force of over 125 trillion tons of TNT. Uh, Skazma, Ajax, Ba Ba Ba, Escape Black Holes. Exploded into a constellation of stars. This isn't even close to Bowser's full strength. Yeah, because it gets like multiversal stuff. Especially if he falls into some of Bowser Jr.'s set of black paint. That's the scary. Enough to unleash Bowser's dark fury. A form whose very steps cause widespread natural disasters. Okay, seriously, how does Mario ever beat this guy? He's like Godzilla, Doctor Strange, and John Cena all in one big turtle. Oh, uh, we're not even to the best part. I think he used the Bowser Jr. plush. Just use a Bowser plush. He eventually learned how to warp the very fabric of reality. Anything the king imagines, he makes happen. He turned all of Yoshi's Island into a storybook. And remember those painted worlds in Mario 64? Yeah, he made those. And the staircase that goes on and on and on and on and on and on. And on. Oh, God, does anyone know how to be LJ? He also stole Ultra. I have backwards long jump. 
which can mold reality like the hell are those fucking go dreamstone which can be used to wish someone out of existence but his most iconic thefts are those big shiny power stars don't judge a book by its cover infant power stars aka lumas can become whole galaxies they also ferry mario across the universe all the mario character forms similar universal million star okay was freed it caused a chain reaction that destroyed the entire god there's like no jokes <laughs> the massive black hole thanks space god that rose uh rosie's cosmic, cosmic implos needed saving he's been swallowed by another black hole and thrown into a star that went supernova imagine if this crazy op fire turtle had to fight himself oh wait he did and he beat the hell out of him with all this power it's a wonder he still hasn't conquered the mushroom kingdom Perhaps it's because his visions of grandeur were never really what he sought. Surrounding him is a crew of outcasts and miscreants like him. Ride or dies that can't be swayed against him. Okay, I'll give credit. They did a better job at, like, actually giving him character stuff than I was expecting. Still, no good jokes, but... Together, they legitimately conquered most of the known universe. So, he's a baddie through and through who will teleport through space and time to show you what's what. Because he's no ordinary Koopa. Make way for the king. Yep, okay, that's good, Eggman's out of the way. That was a fucking long as hell rundown. Like, what? We, it took like four minutes for it to actually start. Ends at 12 right now, I think. That's fucking long. What the hell is this about? I looked a Oh, sports teams. Okay, don't care. I do not care about this, whatever this is. Show me Marvel Snap. And everything. I appreciate a system that takes a lot of the guesswork out unless you actually win through skill. Yeah, like how they've got an actual injury insurance. As in injuries don't ruin your life. I don't know why I don't cut out the uh the ads here, but whatever. I was like, no, they didn't talk about any of the multiversal stuff, which is weird. Or maybe they did, I missed it. I don't know, I might have missed it. That's code death to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Nah, I'm good. I don't do sports shit, so. Citizens of Earth, lend me your ears. Imagine a world of endless possibility where people are free as the wind. Isn't it disgusting? Now imagine a better world, one with proper guidance and the technology to bring about global peace. But Wiz, only a brilliant mind can make that happen. Not just any brilliant. Hey, Wiley! It's almost like Eggman Wiley would have been a better option. As a mad scientist myself, his story is my inspiration, just as Eggman's was his grandfather, Gerald Robotnik who sought to create world peace through technology. But then his beloved granddaughter, Maria, was killed by the guardian unit of nations, better known as... Gun. They're freaking called G-U-N. Anyway, Lil Eggy grew up... Yeah, so animation, sprite, are here. Also, the only memorable thing in the preview. Neglect and envy tainted Ivo's goals of following Gerald's footsteps. He distanced himself from his grandfather's legacy. Instead of bettering the world, he would conquer it to get the attention he deserved. No, you mean crave. Desperately crave. Eh, tomato, tomato. You just said it the same way twice. He aimed to establish Eggman Land, a capital of science. And this paradise would have worked just fine if not for that blasted Sonic the Hedgehog. For years, Eggman's plans literally blew up in his face. And he's a very sore loser. But just like any good experiment, the doctor did more testing, seeking better. Oh yeah, start the end of the talking about the egg dragon, I think. For the preview. Then there's the big ones. He invented a spatial displacement trap, which, while online, scatters a target's atoms across space. Oh, and then there's the metal virus, which transmutes organic tissue into living metal zombies. It's so deadly, it created a plague that nearly wiped out all life on Earth. Jay Eggman never made himself immune to it. That's a whoopsie. And when he's not duping you with decoys, he's riding in style with the Eggmobile. It's lightweight for maneuverability, but tough enough to withstand moon-sized explosions and even the center of a black hole. I mean, it's kind of lame looking, but he can plug it into big bad mechs like the Eggmobile. Egg Walker or the Death Egg Robot, whose giant laser 
once obliterated 77,000 cubic meters of rock in an instant. That's like having an atomic bomb in your pocket all the time. Why are we, why are we taking time on something that small? Men built machines for a long list of combat situations. Some look like knights. Others use extraterrestrial sources like the wisps. And then there's the orbital bases, like the Death A. The reference is obvious, but Darth Vader's version is like a toy compared to the Death Egg, which can annihilate stars. Woo! A whole constellation gone in one shot. That's not to say Eggman doesn't enjoy scrapping with blue hedgehogs himself. Enter the Egg Dragoon. Hell yeah! The rawest of the battle mix. It's got electric drills. It's got ice pistols. It's got a whole lot of bullets. My God, Wiz. I need it. And don't forget, Eggman built all of these things himself. Maybe world domination is in his grasp yet. One problem. Eggman's a turbo loner. No hobbies, no friends, no wife, no nothing. Come on. Oh, I get the reference to the wife joke. What? No, Knuckles is a feminist. Sure, they might have joined forces over a mutually sought revenge in Shadow, but it counts. Sort of. Who needs friends when you can build friends? Obviously, Eggman has a tough time collaborating with others, so he just built his own army instead. The Eggman Empire. Like a true scientist. Mass-produced foot soldiers, buzz bombers, crab meat, scatter killers, egg robos, and don't forget those cute little moto bugs. The bad nicks. They didn't get this far, did they? Yeah, I was like, I, I don't remember where the hell. I know the dragon. What's like the last thing to mention? Troops, even your classic comedy duo with Orbot and Cubot, their Eggman's assistants, and immense. Yeah, fuck the uh, the cartoon Sonic duo out there. But that's why he's made top notch bots model. We get the better one, sucker. Like everyone's favorite Robo Faker, Metal Sonic. Metal Sonic has the most horsepower in the Eggman M. Shadow's the Faker. God. His rebellious phases, but Eggman's reprogrammed metal to better follow his commands. Additionally, when upgraded to a joke about uh, Eggman Wily biological data, including unique powers like Shadow's time stop technique, chaos control. He could even copy Silver's psychokinesis, and with enough chaos energy, he powers up into Super Neo Metal Sonic. Though everything would change with the appearance of the Phantom Ruby, one of many trump cards at Eggman's. I was the IDW. I think I was trying to remember what comic it was that is canon to the games. In my prediction video, it was IDW. I don't remember if I could remember that then. I don't know. Consciousness, which is a thing, the Ruby granted Eggman the Light Man form. Yep, apparently Super Eggman is canon, though it is pretty complicated to manifest. But the Phantom Ruby isn't the only souped up gem Eggman has. He's used the jeweled scepter. God, they, these rug downs feel like slogs, Jesus. Like, these are very slow feeling. Because they're trying to put so much shit into these. It's like, cool, we're getting longer rundowns, but man, this is slow. And eventually, he built something that started to build on him. Sage was originally designed as a mere assistant, but through an alien encounter, she was granted actual sentience. Funny thing, I got Sonic Forces, or uh, Frontiers, like, the other day, but I haven't gotten to play it yet. So, uh, bad timing on my end. Okay. Finally, a good joke. Took that long. Personality lacking, but Sage's great adequacy in serving her function provided Eggman with something that, for the first time, he'd hate to lose. In essence, a, a sort of daughter. Oh, that's like that art. Okay. And this frankly unheard of trust from Eggman became crucial in defeating the end. A primordial entity so mighty even Supersonic struggled against it. Their battle can only be described as peak fiction. Give fucks Lars, you don't even get mentioned here. Loser. The power of one emerald can shift continents. All seven together can shift the universe. And kill some pretty terrifying bosses. Like Eggman's Time Eater, which ripped apart space-time like tissue paper. In short, Chaos Emeralds give thoughts power. With them, Eggman's best machines can run indefinitely while matching the greatest powers ever seen. Like when three supers battled Solaris. Ah, oh, that damn it! Spoke too soon! Itself. Solaris extended its chaos across multiple timelines in about 20 seconds, or 73 quadrillion times light speed. It's funny, though. 
While Eggman's smarts have sort of defeated Sonic here and there, he's pretty effective when he teams up with the Blue Blur to save the world. Well, recall how Professor Gerald was a good person before losing the granddaughter he loved. In Eggman's case, now that he has Sage, perhaps a similar story is playing out in reverse. Does that mean Sage is gonna get shot? <laughs> Will Sage get fucking shot next month next Sonic game then? <laughs> Okay, cool. Let's get this fucking fight over with. Oh yeah, Marvel. I'm, I'm I I have this download, but I've yet to play it. One with everyone's favorite Marvel characters. It's just such a. Okay, there was a there was a lag there for a minute. What the fuck? It takes like three minutes, and the different locations, card powers, and snap mechanic, and so many layers of depth and strategy for a game that's so easy to get into. Don't forget the amazing 3D art. Oh man. With all the new Hulk! Cards Where's Godzilla? I can't stop playing it. Sorry. Also, I might as well talk about it the next time, because, uh, Ben said that it was something that they weren't sure on originally, but we convinced them on, and it's gonna fucking be Among Us vs. Fall Guys, I'm calling it. Everyone's calling it. It's gonna be Among Us vs. Fall Guys, and that's gonna how we end the year off. I don't think we're ending this year off on a bang of some more guys, but... Let's see. <sighs> Why do we sit on that for like a minute? Or a couple right, seconds, weird. Okay, let's... Oh, that's Skylanders! Okay, Skylanders. Awesome. Glad we got Skylanders. Oh, is that why King Boo is in the thing? Uh, Bowser, come! How did you not? Okay, setup is good at least. Yeah, I don't like that Bowser's voice that much so far. I think it's more so just because it's hard to do a good Bowser impression while speaking full sentences. That's not like just a few words. That's my reason for not thinking it's that good, but I might grow on it. Oh yeah, it's a vocal track. Weird that this is a vocal track. A furry! Kill the furry right away! Weird that, like, this is a vocal track. I don't know why this had to get a vocal. Where the fuck is Eggman? <laughs> okay, that was a good show. Also, not getting a lot of focus on Bowser's army, which, yeah, they're hyping us with an army saying, and Bowser's own army ain't doing too much. Oh, that's a cool way to bring in that form. I forgot what it's called. Fury. Bowser's Fury. Okay, the hand-drawn animation for Bowser there is cool. That's a cool looking design. I'll give it that. Like, the visuals on this are really good. And Shatter... Oh, that's it. Kamek hasn't really done anything. There's Kamek. And there goes Kamek. Yep, 
Yep, and then now there goes for the kill. Okay, good voice delivery there. Like, this is visually cool, yeah. Is that 3D? Or is this really good hand drawn? That went 3D for a minute. Yeah, dry bounce. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say, I'm keeping my bet on uh, Bowser. I forgot to say that. <laughs> Whoops. And yep. Oh, hey, an aftermath. That's cool. First time we had like an aftermath since Sh Captain Marvel's Shazam. Yeah, Bowser won. Who's shocked? Who the fuck is shocked? What? Okay, I'm not a fan of the category thing. I don't know, it's just weird to me. Yeah, fight was cool. I'll I'll give credit. Record, I still think you could have done more with their other options. And Bowser's own army kind of took the backseat in it, which did draw my attempt, my issue with the matchup, where you're not you kind of have to cut out lab army stuff to make it work right. So my issues did get vindicated. It looks cool. I'll give it that. But my issues were still vindicated. I'll save it. Save the rest of it for after. Yeah, I called Bowser winning. But only across different mechs, fortresses, or space bases. Bowser's all natural. He's got all his best powers built in, and he ain't even a robot. Meaning he wins the war of attrition. He even had counters for battle enders like the metal virus and spatial displacement trap. Context matters for those weapons, and both backfired in the past. But more importantly, Bowser could simply reverse the effects with his transmutation magic. Conversely, what the hell is that? His robots could get I missed that somehow. Frog or a block with no reliable way back. Bowser <laughs> yep. the edge in powers, but definitely not for intelligence. Come on, you have a four. I must go through the entirety of the physical stats. That's cute. I mean, don't get me wrong. Bowser's not an idiot. Usually, just really, really clumsy. Poor fella. Hard-headed. Man's an engineering genius who rarely ever gets bested by brains. Easy dub. Now let's talk trump cards. As in items so powerful they could decide the entire outcome on their. Oh, this guy like. Why is it all weird? Why the quality dip? What the fuck? Whoops. Oh shit. Wonderflower, which mucks up reality for real. The ruby of. That's why. Why the fuck? Why is this hap? Why is it buffering? I missed some of that. Oh well. Why is it buffering? Also, the Dreamstone's ability to wish anything out of existence would have no problem. Why is it buffering? Metal Sonic or Time Eater, their most prized. Why is it buffering? Together, the Chaos Emeralds can break the. Hold up. Why? Okay. Fuck me. I gotta fix this for the next time. Okay. One eighty. One eighty. One eighty. Well, that will stop buffering if I go one eighty. There we go. Far more plentiful. Clearly this okay, I had to miss some of that. Weird. And both had multiple options that could win the day instantly. Where was Moses? I must have missed a lot of this. I have to rewatch the fight. Which means it's finally time to compare their armies. I'll rewatch the fight in the conclusion. I mean, look at all those buzz saws and rockets. Metal Sonic speed and power alone could solo most of the Koopa Troop. But the Eggman Empire lacked something Bowser had in space. 
teamwork and loyalty. Eggman is a notoriously terrible team player. His alliances are practically guaranteed to fall apart. Yeah, pretty much. Generations, he could barely manage working with himself. Eggman's army is designed to be controlled by just him. To Eggman, it's harder to command those with free will. Hence his rivalry with the free natured Sonic. Meanwhile, the Koopa Troop follows Bowser because they actually like him. They train really hard to cover each other's weak points, giving them plenty of advantages as this war progressed, like battlefield control through King Boo. I'm gonna say the conclusion was fine, solid, because I couldn't see most of it. <laughs> Which I'm not blaming the episode for. That's just internet. Metal Sonic's power copying, stealing the Phantom Ruby, and potentially swapping the Chaos Emeralds were huge game changers. Add on that Bowser and his army can use any Mario power-up item, and they had millions, no, billions of combinations that the Eggman Empire just could not actively plan against. Even with so is Eggman, Eggman's <laughs> intelligence was his only advantage. <laughs> yeah, how people had Eggman winning, I don't know. Eggman was no pushover. His wit, power output, and ridiculous machine. All right, Bowser's let's see what the next time is. But the Koopa King's God, please let the next time be something I can be invested in. Ultimately prevailed. Eggman tried to poach the king, and now he's cracked and scrambled. The winner is Bowser. All right, what's next? What? Oh, yep. Wow, who's surprised? I'm sure as hell not. Is that sprite or hand drawn? I wasn't paying attention. Shit. Oh, yep. Yeah. There's that. I don't like that matchup, but god fucking damn it. I'm, I'm more. I'd be more excited for that. Also, that's the only new franchises we're getting this year, technically. All right, and let's uh, refresh. Set through some ad bullshit, and then uh, I'll rewatch the fight and their conclusion. Okay, I do not trust this pie thing. I do not trust it at all. Yeah, we watched the fight. How? 27 minutes. Jesus Christ. We couldn't use that time on other episodes? Yes, we'll rewatch the fight and then I'll get my thoughts on the overall episode. That was stupidly long, though. Jesus. Operation Catfish. I can barely also hear the vocals in the back of this one. Why did it look weirdly jank? You call these toys an invasion force, but seem so stupid. That's a decoy, you idiot. This power is without cure. It is the ultimate strength. Got infinite got infinite got fucking manhandled, Jesus. Oh yeah, Kamek did that. I'm sorry I'm not talking a lot, I'm just paying attention to this. Trying to see if I can see the shit I somehow missed. You've lost the battle before it has begun. Excellent work is always better. Ready to wrap this up, Sage? As you planned. I do like Eggman's voice a lot. Eggman's voice is very good in this. Showtime. It's just, yeah, Zax doesn't really sound too much like Bowser at points. 
Which is fair, it's hard to do Bowser's voice while speaking full sentences. I said that earlier. Because it doesn't really have a voice for that. Hence why Jack Black just did Jack Black. Yeah, Eggman had like two notable people on his side, and that was it. Because Chaos just got fucking manhandled. So did Kamek, but. Metal Sonic died twice on the show. Wasn't it sun wasn't it daytime? Why is the moon there? I just realized that. in the post analysis that just weren't in the fight. I feel like there was. I don't know. Oh no, right there. I think no, I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Okay, yeah, so for the fight, they hyped this up to be a big army thing. But really, only Eggman's army did much. I, I, I've noticed that for watching that. Like, Bowser's army did some stuff, but they're barely in it. Well, yeah, Eggman's army took main focus over him in this. I, I felt like that was the case here. While Bowser took way more focus over his own army, and, like, wasn't the point of hyping this matchup up about the army aspect wants to see their armies fighting. Yeah, so my, basically, my issue with the matchup got proven in the episode. Um, yeah, people are gonna praise this, because, yeah, visually, this is really cool. I do think this is a visually cool episode, and there's definitely a lot of cool moments throughout it. I, I will give it props to that. There are cool-looking moments in it, and it is visually awesome. I'm not gonna disagree with that, but the big thing, the whole army fighting each other, barely got vocal vocalized, or f vocalized? Barely got focused on. <laughs> and that was kind of my issue with this matchup to begin with, so... Yeah, I guess I just turned out to be right on that aspect. So it just makes me ask, why not just do a Bowser versus a one person and not having an army thing, and Eggman versus someone with an army just have a whole army thing? I don't know, I feel like my issue with the matchup got vindicated right then and there. Oh, but people are going to ignore it anyways, I know that for a fact. People are going to ignore it because it does look cool. I will agree on that. It does look cool. But that was the whole selling point on this matchup. And, nah. This war was not an easy one to win, which might seem surprising given... I didn't want to rewatch the conclusion as well because I had to miss some of it. I'm talking about that part again. God damn it. Hey, oh. This war was not an easy one to win. Which might seem surprising given how the Sonic series is not afraid to show how tough its cast is, while Mario's comes across as more cartoony. But it yeah. turns out Bowser has Tune Force is fun. To take Chrome down. Strap in. This one's a lot, so we'll break it down into five categories. First up is physical stats. Bowser pretty handedly outmatched any of Eggman's usual mechs, like the Egg Dragoon. Uh, Bowser Space Dragon is Egg Bowser. Oh, yeah, they did also focus on that one feat for Bowser. Bowser's strength is certainly above the green dinosaurs. Plus, while both Bowser and Eggman's tech survive black holes, Bowser's was much larger. <sighs> so, he may win stats, but this could change with their powers. With so many okay, yeah, so stats is really straightforward. That was like a barely a focus. Items, both 
could manipulate mines, create duplicates. Vothal's mind control spray and those could resist Eggman similar attack. Okay. Have access to the majority of his abilities at all times. Yeah, Eggman can do some crazy stuff, but only across different mechs, fortresses, or space bases. Bowser's all natural. He's got all his best powers built in, and he ain't even a robot. Meaning he wins the war of attrition. He even had counters for battle enders like the metal virus and spatial displacement trap. Context matters for those weapons and both backfired in the past. I'm also not gonna comment on the track because I could barely fucking hear the vocals in the fight. Which other episodes do that, so I'm not gonna necessarily dock points, but it's a bit of an issue with it. Or at least not gonna dock points with the track. Yeah, was this scene. Oh, alternative scenario. I miss those words. Bowser could simply reverse the effects with his transmutation magic. Conversely, most of Eggman's robots could get turned into, say, a frog or a block with no reliable way back. Is that gonna be like a thing going forward, just having alternative sequences? Not for intelligence. Come on. You have a four-digit IQ, Bowser? Really? That's cute. I mean, don't get me wrong. Bowser's not an idiot. Usually, just really, really clumsy. Poor fella. Meanwhile, Eggman's an engineering genius who rarely ever gets bested by brains. Wait, he backhands someone in that one panel? Hold up. I want to see it. Oh, I saw he backhands someone in that fucking panel right there where it says, thank you, metal. Okay, this is part I couldn't watch because of buffering. The Phantom Ruby was super dangerous, but specifically targets perceptions. Unlike Bowser's Wonder Flower, which mucks up reality for real, the Ruby... Okay, another alternate scenario I missed. Planet, but the Wonder Flower had the power to alter the universe. Also, the Dreamstone's ability to wish anything out of existence would have no problem cleaning up Super Neo Metal Sonic or Time Eater. The I had Time Eater and Neo Bowser weren't there. Okay, how much stuff was animated but not used in the fight and just for these alternative things? That's gonna be a thing going forward. That just feels like an, an un, like it's cool, but an unnecessary waste of like resources for this. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm. Together, the Chaos Emeralds I'm not. I'm not really on. I'm on popular Texas. Arguably not as much given the emerald scaling to Solaris, though power stars and grand stars are far more plentiful. Clearly, this is getting fairly abstract, and both had multiple options that could win. Yeah, like Instead, all these alternative so sequences. Why not just have them in the fight, the or just? Tie, which means uh, finally time to compare their armies. Eggman seems deadlier at first glance. I mean, look at all those buzz saws and rockets. Metal Sonic speed and power alone could. This has a good conclusion. I do like that they go very much in depth. A lot, a lot of matches could utilize that, and having a long analysis is a good thing. Bit of a drag, yes, in some some farces like the army and the whole ability thing. But good to have a, a more in depth rundown, like Dio Card. Betrayed by shells, chaos. That's a whole list of people that have betrayed him. Jesus Christ. They train really hard to cover each other's weak points, giving them plenty of advantages as this war progressed, like battlefield control through King Boo's magic and Bowser Jr.'s paint. And since the Koopa Troop doesn't rely that much on technology, Sage's hacking potential had little use. Also, secret yeah. weapon? Kamek is kind of busted. Canceling Metal Sonic's power copy. I think Eggman's finite, randomness, uh, blah, 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 blah. What the fuck? Oh, shit, did it crash? What the hell's happening? I don't know what's happening. Were huge game changers. What the hell was that? I don't know if that's gonna appear on this or not. But it just fucking froze and it's just like, like, I do not know why. Did that show up on the thing? What the fuck was that? Why did that happen? It looks like it's still recording, but Jesus. Is kind of busted. Canceling Metal Sonic's power copying. Okay, then. That was weird. Potentially swapping the Chaos Emeralds were huge game changers. Add on that Bowser and his army can use any Mario power up item, and they had millions. No yeah, this is a sub. Combinations that the Eggman Empire just this is very clear cut. Even with Sage's millions of so what was all the uh, advantages? A truly loyal army, more useful inherent abilities, stronger base form. What do you mean space form? He's just stronger in general. <laughs> Cosmic reality warping powers, equivalent strength via forms. Oh, okay, that's why. Kamex mind control magic was ineffective. 
Far more intelligent, cosmic and reality warping weapons, equivalent strengths via max, less efficient, leadership, sage te technopathic was infective, army is mostly vulnerable, transmutation magic. Okay. To take on the Titans, she thought them to be unbeatable, which Sonic proved was incorrect. Just comparing their conquests makes it clear. The Eggman Empire took over the whole planet, but Bowser's troop conquered most of the universe. Eggman was no push-up. Okay, I, I want to mention this now. People complain about Sonic. Sonic and Shadow being lowballed in their previous episodes. On um, Sonic, that was just because, yes, he's back then they did lowball characters for to make it more digestible for casual audiences, and Shadow murdered Ryoko was what they gave. I don't know why they would not want him lowballed. I can't wait for people to complain that they lowballed Eggman. In this. Yeah, they did lowball a bit with stats, at least with calculable stuff. But yeah, a oh, kind of. They kind of lowballed. Yeah, I take I take that back. I don't. I'm not entirely sure because I didn't pay attention to like the in higher higher ends. I didn't feel like it. Ludicrous strength, abilities, and united forces ultimately prevailed. Eggman tried to poach the king, and now he's cracked and scrambled. The winner is Bowser. And now, man, guys. God damn it. Okay, so is that sprites? Let me uh, go back a bit. Yeah, this is sprite. So it's like a crossover with Among Us and Fuck Out? What is happening for this fight? It's called Among Us versus Fall Guys. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. We all kind of just like, yeah, it's gonna be Falk among guys next, and I also consider this a bad matchup. It used to be my bottom, like, top, or bottom ten least wanted, or whatever the fuck you would phrase it. I've grown a bit more to it. It's it's not a good matchup. And I think it's mostly just a joke idea that I went a bit too far a couple of years ago, but I'm just grown mostly neutral to it. It's not good. But I don't hate it. Kind of a weird way to end the year off. Also, we had no Marvel DC this whole year, technically speaking. But, yeah, Among Us vs. Fall Guys, not too surprised. And for the epi overall episode, I it's better than what I was expecting, but I was not expecting a good episode to begin with. I, the rundowns feel fucking stupidly long, which, yeah, I get it, there is a lot of stuff to go over, which, yeah, completely fair, but doesn't help the, help that it, they feel like they drag on for such a long time. Like, how long was Bowser's? Bowser's was, what, like, what, seven minutes? Yeah, it was kind of long, and Eggman's was also fucking long as hell, like, how long did it take for, like, yeah, 16, so that's, was Eggman's, like, way longer? I don't know. Probably not because the whole break was ad, but still. Like, the rundowns went on and on. They're... I don't really think they're that good of rundowns. Bowser's is definitely better than what I was expecting. I was I was really expecting it to be more along the line of links from uh, 2021, where they kind of gave, like, the bre like the barest minimum of character and story coverage, as in they barely talked about it, and it was just a Respect Fred lineup Oh, excuse me, of Arsenal. Well, in this case, Army added in, which is more Arsenal. And it wasn't exactly like that. I don't really think any of the jokes in it landed for me, personally. But I did like the more character coverage bit at the end. That was very nice. I do like them talking about Bowser being more of a family man, or family guy, if you will. Eggman's had at least one or two jokes I liked, but does suffer the same thing with Bowser's, where it drags on because of how long it is and how much it has to cover. Which is not entirely the matchup itself's fault. Because, yeah, with another Eggman matchup, Eggman Wiley, I that would also have a similar issue. Though part of it is also just, like, keeping the rundown entertaining, which I didn't think these suits did that well. The visual edits, they were fucking amazing. I'm not gonna discredit those. The edits in this episode, fucking amazing. I especially like the sprite edits, and I would be down if they did that with other episodes going forward. But, yeah, I don't think, like, they're not the best rundowns. They're, at best, fine enough, but not good. 
they exist. I'm just gonna say that. The rundowns exist. They're not the greatest. I they're not really that funny and they do drill. they drag for a long ass time, but they're fine. The fight itself, visually, it's very good. Morals animation, fucking spectacular. Problem is, is like my issues with the matchup reared its head in that fight. Ba Bowser's army did not get a lot of focus in that fight for like how much they talked about it in the rundown. Like there, his army did not get that much focus in the fight itself. It was mostly Bowser fight Bowser himself fighting Eggman's army. That was mostly what the what the animation was. And yeah, that kind of brought back to my issue with the matchup to begin with. Like it is visually good, though I don't think good visuals make for a great episode or amazing episode or what people were claiming this to be a 10 out of 10. And I know everyone's going to be giving this a 10 out of 10. I fucking know this. I know I'm going to be in the minority when I say I don't think this is the greatest episode. It's better than what I was expecting it's going to be. Like, I, I can be reasonable. I don't think it's a great episode. It's, I think it just gets above the okay range because while what we have here visually, yes, it's very good. The whole thing that got hyped up with this was the whole army aspect about the fight. And, like I said, Bowser's army does not do too much, while Eggman's army takes way more focus over him than it does Eggman. Like, the whole Eggman side of the fight feels more focused on his army than Eggman himself. Since I think Metal Sonic might actually do more fighting than Eggman himself, which, Jesus Christ. Which does, like I said, draw back to my issues with the match with Beacon West. I think I'm going to give this a low 7 out of 10, and a 7 for me is still good. It's just above the range of okay for me. And I know I'm going to be in the fucking way minority when saying that. Sorry, <laughs> Bowser Eggman fans. But I'll give you this. It was better than what I was thinking it was going to be. It's still not great, but it was a... It was just a good episode. Just barely a good episode. And like I said, I'm not going to comment on the track because uh, I could barely hear it in the fight. I'll wait for it to come out on its own. But yeah, and then Among Us for Saw Guys, not entirely looking forward to that, but I'm more excited for that than I am this. And it would be pretty cool if they got Larry on this, because he is basically the guy that probably made the idea get as popular as it did in 2022. But, uh, yeah, I'm hoping this recording didn't get fucked by the whole fucking bit there. I don't know what the hell happened to that, but... Anyways, uh, yeah. Peace.